I love the tradition that says, uh, that we use at the beginning of our services for so many years. Uh, I would open the service on Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, and say, He is risen. And then the congregation would respond, He is risen indeed. And praise the Lord, He has risen indeed. And we celebrate that today. Uh, Resurrection Sunday, the glorious day when Jesus came out of the tomb alive. Praise the Lord. And without that, we would be, as Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, of all men most miserable. But praise the Lord, he has risen. He has shown himself, proven himself to be who he said he was. And we rejoice in that fact today and in the hope of his return to take us to be with him. He said before he left, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And so we look forward to that for his return. Amen. Well, Lord bless you today on this uh, Resurrection Sunday and pray that you find a place to share together and to worship together with other brothers and sisters in the glorious fact that we are alive because he is alive. Amen. Well, our reading today is in 1 Samuel 6 and 7, Psalm 72 and 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And uh, this, this isn't really a, um, a Resurrection Sunday morning devotion, but Boy, it sure is an important one, as I read in 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 5. Therefore you shall make images of your tumors and images of your rats and that ravage the land, and you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand from you, from our, from your gods, and from your land. So, uh, kind of an interesting account here as uh, we see this situation happening in, in, uh, in Israel where... Um, they have captured the ark and uh, <laughs> no good has come to the Philistines as a result of that. But you know, I am just constantly amazed at the incidents that occur in the Old Testament. Uh, these uncircumcised Philistines seemed, <laughs> seemed to know more about what to do in order to worship God than the Israelites whom God had worked all their miracles for knew what to do. Too often, I think, do we forget God's awesome ability to do to do what no human being could ever do. We doubt his word sometimes, complain about our situation, about our circumstances, forgetting how often he has delivered each and every one of us in the past and the glorious things that he has done in our lives. And that not to mention the historical record that we have of all that he's done in the word of God. So we have much to draw upon when we, when we look at the circumstances and situations of life that seem to want to overwhelm us. We have an historical record. We have a, the proof in our lives and the lives of all of other people that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. So what's the answer to our failure in all of this? Well, there must be a return to what we know and, and believe. There must not be a rewriting of the past in order to, uh, for the principles of Scripture to fit our own whims. We can't do that. When we change the truth to fit our culture, then we've lost the battle. And the Philistines are going to rule over us with cruel intent, speaking metaphorically. But only the Lord can deliver us from their hand. But praise God, he has done that. We can trust the word of God. We look to the Lord. We look to his word. And on this Resurrection Sunday particularly, do we give him praise for all that he has done? Because he lives we also live, and I am so thankful to the Lord for that. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. May the Lord richly bless you today.